What's up guys, Kplace here. I want to try something a bit different today. I'm sure some of you might know about the streamer Asmongold getting into Monster Hunter World. I've tuned in recently while he's been stuck on a latch round the last couple weeks. Unfortunately for him and his sanity, he finally managed to take it down a couple days ago, just before he was ready to drop the game entirely. While he was taking a much needed breather through the post-fight cutscene, I caught this line from the chat. Now I doubt Asmongold is taking up that challenge anytime soon, but it got me thinking. What would it look like if he did? That's what gave me the idea for this challenge run. View Latrion as alternate timeline, hunting or using Asmongold. Here are the rules I'm giving myself. Number one, use the same loadout he would've. That means for hunting tools, my palico will be using the Vigoroth spray, and I'll be taking the Brock Steady Mantle and Health Booster. I'll also be making a set as close to the one he used to finally beat Latrion as I can. I was gonna use the exact same set at first, but it turns out that I actually tossed all my focus decorations since I never need them as hunting or user. I'll be subbing that out for Horn Maestro, since I'd really hope that Alternate Timeline Chat would have told Alternate Timeline Asmongold that it's an important skill for him. Number 2, same items. That means no attack increasing items, and more importantly, no smoke bombs, so I can't use the stealth exploit. Usually I'd use this to give me a free moment to sharpen and then pull Latrion back to the ground to skip the annoying time wasting flight mode. That's off the table in this run though, so we'll have to fight it in the air. Number 3, no health augment. This is gonna be an interesting one for me because health augment is pretty much used on every hunting orb. Keeps peak performance active easily, but I won't be able to access that because of rule 1. The bigger result of this handicap is that I'll have to play things a bit more cautiously. Latrion has a few attacks that you can punish by attacking through them with a regen to keep you safe, but without it, the openings become a lot more risky. Normally you can pull off some tricks using the Fletch Claw instead, but this time I won't be able to do that because of the next rule. Number 4, Mirror His Playstyle. Obviously I won't be able to do this perfectly because of the different weapon and difference in monster hunter experience, but there are a few limits I can give myself based on this final successful run. The biggest will be no clutch claw unless I get a clagger. That means my usual opening strategy of using a flint shot to wallbang, tenderize, and enrage a latrion is also off the table. I should be able to get at least a couple chances to tenderize, but without using the claw slap I won't be able to force the rage and make latrion take more damage. That's gonna hurt with how little offensive skills are in the set I'm using. There will be no grappling on to attack while avoiding certain moves either, and I also mentioned no smoke bombs, so this cuts out another option to pull Latrion out of flight mode with flint shots. And finally, number 5. I'll be doing the whole run blindfolded, and nobody can prove I didn't because I don't use face cam. <laughs> no, I'm joking, we have fun here. But seriously, this should be a pretty interesting challenge. Before we get into this, if you guys have any other challenges you'd like to see me take, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll give them a shot. Right now though, let's get into the hunt. Alright, so before your first completion, you don't actually get the camp, so I'm gonna run straight in. that first roar and I'm actually gonna die on purpose because the set has fortify in it I need some sort of extra damage we just got to burn that first revive and we're out of here I'm actually gonna go ahead and die twice but these kind of have to be the only deaths I take like if I take another eschaton judgment that's gonna be it we're mm, we're gonna ignore me getting stuck on the box there but anyway, like I was saying, um, if I take another Eschaton because I can't hit the Elemental Threshold, which might happen if I end up going through both worm breaks, this, this run is over, pretty much. So, Death 2. Nah, now Death 2. <laughs> Alrighty, then we should start the fight for real now. Since I'm in camp, I actually will go ahead and pre-buff right after I eat. Yes. <laughs> Alright, the way I'm seeing it right now is Hunting Horn is a lot better elemental weapon than Greatsword, so I should have a lot easier time getting the threshold hit. But... It's also a worse raw weapon, so I'm be doing less damage overall since Elatrion is a better raw fight than an elemental fight. You really just need element to hit the thresholds and that's it. So we'll see how this ends up evening out. Dodge that. Alright, now what you're going to be seeing me do here is two things. Um, the set doesn't have a lot of affinity as for usual because I think it has like one weakness exploit and critical eye four. 
but it also has crit draw on it from the Valkana pieces, so I'm going to try to use sort of a crit draw, greatsword, hunting horn strategy hybrid something. But anyway, this- ooh, Jesus. Alright, usually I don't do a lot of commentary on my runs. Actually, I think this is the first commentary run I've ever done, so uh, you guys are going to have to watch me for a little bit. But uh, like I was saying, uh, the second reason I'm going to be doing this is because of the Frostcraft. Uh, since there's like little to no damage skills on this setup, I'm going to need all the damage I can get, which means that maximum Frostcraft build is going to be key to actually knocking this thing out. Alright, and then as I say that, I walk up with my weapon of cheat. But, alright. Okay, flight mode. Alright, I'm actually really bad at using flight mode because I never actually play with it. Usually I just use the stealth bomb, or the smoke bomb animation, and call it a day. So we're maybe gonna try to just use this health booster rock steady mantle thing that Asmongold was using and just spam attacks to knock him down. If I'm lucky I can use the elemental topple to get him out of the sky. If not I'm just gonna be tickling his feet until he finally lands. But yeah I am actually really terrible at <laughs> reacting to these moves because I'm never actually fighting with these moves. And another thing I'm going to do doing is, because I don't have the wet fish fin, oh yes, finally. Ah, that wasn't actually that bad, but still, it's a lot easier to just fight him on the ground. But yeah, there, since I'm not going to be able to use any wet fish fins, I'm going to be using the regular whetstone, which is like four times longer to use to actually sharpen. Ah, there's the topple. So... It's going to be rough trying to get those sharpens in, especially since I have no protective polish like I usually do when my Frostcraft builds. Purple is going to be another thing I'm really going to need to boost damage. Right, usually I'd stand a little bit in front of the horns just to avoid that explosion, but this is Blight Resistance 3 on it, so I don't get Dragon Blighted, so I don't care. finally get that Enrage. Enrage is going to be important because Elatran takes, I believe, it's 20% extra damage while he's enraged. Yikes, I am. Alright, that was messy. Alright, second flight. Can't use the Rock Setting Mantle this time, so it's just going to be a matter of just avoiding. I'll take this time to sharpen while he's beating the crap out of my cat. I wish I at least had speed sharpening, that was close. Alright, let's see if we can get a couple smacks. And we miss completely. Alright. Again. Alright. And this is why I use smoke bombs in my Elytrion runs. But, alright, we're landing back to business. Okay, this move right here. This is one of the moves that makes me really like Ice Mode over Fire Mode. Usually what I can do is just use the Health Augment to just smack right through the tick damage on that ice, but since I don't have it here, I gotta either get out of the way or Clutch Claw. But one of the rules I gave myself is no Clutch Claw either, so I can't do that. Alright, we got the Horn Break. And I actually still haven't gotten the clagger now that I'm thinking about clutch line. There's next to no damage. Oh, Jesus. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Dodge the lightning. That was bad positioning. That was better positioning. And there's the Clagger. Alright, cool. We finally get a Tenderize like almost 10 minutes into the hunt. <laughs> Jeez. Actually, I don't know how long I've been going, but I'm assuming it's just longer because I'm expecting this run to be just rough. Oh, 
All right, we're finally starting to do some good damage with the Enrage and Tenderize up. That, and, and the Enrage is gone, so one out of two went bad, I guess. <laughs> All right. Really generous with this move that I can't exploit it. Hopefully, my next couple tries of the speed run to get my sub 10 minute. It's that generous, but we'll we'll see about that. All right. I think after that, I might give Electron a break a little while because three Electron hunts in a row is a little bit extra, a bit much. All right, that's the first Eskaton. Get a little damage in just because I have enough sharpness and enough health. And then we heal, and we're good. Alright, now as fun as Elatron usually is for me, it's kind of like your like, nice get good, test to see how good you are, uh, gauge your reaction time, fight. I'm probably going to try like a couple bunch of runs with a bunch of gimmick builds, like you know, just try something outside of the meta. Technically Frostcraft Hunting Horn is outside of the meta, but it's also really strong if you do it right. But you know, maybe some gimmick, gimmick builds. Just for fun, because the next Monster Hunter game isn't going to be for at least another year. Yeah, and I am also still working on my World vs. Rise Hunting Horn video, and also my uh, Wilds wishlist. That one's going to take a while, though, because I'm doing going pretty in-depth. <laughs> More in-depth than I thought I was going to. I've literally been spending time just comparing World vs. Rise movesets, like, frame by frame just to see exactly what the differences are between the two. But back to this hunt. Alright, we got Rage back. And then he goes to chase my cat down. I'm really glad this isn't like a speedrun speedrun because he is focusing on my cat and it's not giving me a lot of time to... oh. Not get hit by lightning. But also just, you know, focus on do the damage get these tenderizes back up because I don't know how much I'm actually going to get and then I get hit again, Jesus. Yeah, don't expect to hear me much when I'm actually doing a <laughs> an actual speedrun speedrun because I cannot split attention like that. The casual runs, I don't know, maybe I might try to do a bunch of uh, commentary or just some commentary to see what you guys like trying something new now that we got this channel uh, back up after a year or so of hiatus. Alright. Get that topple. I think if I was doing this more seriously, I would probably bump light resistance down to two. Reason for that would be uh, so I can get coalescence in here for extra damage, but also because if I'm not gonna smoke bomb, I want to save the topple to knock him out of the sky. But this <laughs> this hunting horn has just a little bit too much elemental damage, so he's knocking him out of this of the elemental mode or the getting elemental topple before he goes into the sky. Then he goes into the sky, and I have nothing to get him back down again, except for waiting. Because I don't think a flinch will knock him out of the sky. I think he'll just flinch and stay in the air. A KO maybe, but like I said, I haven't gotten very much practice of fighting him in the air, so I can't hit consistent headshots. Alright, back to the tank setup. This is actually going to be a one-and-done kind of run, so I haven't practiced this a lot. So I actually don't know how many elemental phases I'm going to go through, so I'm going to try to get the second home break. And hopefully kill him before I have to get to the third, because once the third comes around, he's going to go to ice mode. And I'm not going to be able to topple him, and that'll be game over pretty much, because no element means no topple. <laughs> no topple means instant death on Eskaton. Flight mode is horrible. 
There's one head hit. I think that's the first one I've done, and he's back on the ground anyway, so it doesn't matter. Horns. And that's the last of the control I have over elemental modes. Rage back. So we got some sort of damage, but now the tenderize is gone. Can I? Yeah, yeah, I actually can. That's another one of the ice moves where you can just kind of fight right through the tick damage. But if you hit him on the side right, you can still pretty much do whatever you want, and he's just gonna sit there and take it pretty much. This one right here is pretty much the most cooperative move out of all of Fire Mode. Fire Mode is a lot more unforgiving when it comes to just giving you free windows to attack. But on the flip side, uh, you get a lot better weapon for Ice Mode because you get Ringrio, the Frostfang Barrier Hunting Horn. It's a lot better than. I think, uh, yeah, Safi's Hellhorn is going to be the best fire option you get. So better weapon, worse matchup, worse matchup, better weapon. Right, second Eschaton. Usually I would be done by now, so this is a... <laughs> there's a huge difference in damage between this set and my usual. Kind of goes to show that, you know, builds aren't everything, but they definitely have an effect. It really makes me wonder how people do naked runs with no set whatsoever. Like, you know. You can skill and you can do all the moves like that, you know from practicing the fight for a long time, but you know, when you got no damage skills and it's just the base damage from your weapon, that's a huge difference in just output. Like, I've seen more double digit damage numbers on this run than I have since like, originally playing through <laughs> like low rank and high rank. get the songs back up. There's one thing we really can't do is let any songs go down. Or take point blank fireballs to the face like that. And this is really making me notice just how much health augment makes a difference because I would usually just attack straight through like half this stuff. I take the hit, I take a hit like that for example and I just go straight back in and just keep smacking and I would be at back at full peak performance 100% health right as rain. Now my palico is helping me heal but it's less me worrying about just taking a little hit and heal and more just like those hits adding up and then me dying to something stupid. Alright, we're on white sharpness. I'm gonna need to find a second to heal s or not heal, sharpen somewhere in here. Doing a lot of echo attacks probably isn't helping the spin to win shreds my sharpness. Probably be a good idea to do more attacks like this, the big single hit damage. Especially since sound attacks actually don't use up any sharpness. And keep me from having to find sharpening 
openings, but that actually was a pretty good one. Like, this move is, again, why Ice Mode is a lot easier. He doesn't just jump straight into the air and do the backwards, like, three-split fireball thing. Like he would with Fire Mode. Was it worth it? <laughs> All right, crit draw hunting horn. All right, crit miss hunting horn. <laughs> Let's not do that. We do need our moving speed and fifteen percent attack back up. I feel like something that would definitely catch up Asmongold, an alternate timeline hunting or an Asmongold lot, is keeping his songs up. Because you're seeing I'm doing like just long recitals, and so I'm not having to waste time doing the encore. Uh, loading two songs up at once to try to get them both out, doing like quick, quick encores when I'm actually getting those in. Uh, just watching him play Greatsword, even though I don't know a lot about Greatsword, I feel like he would have it rough. This is Eschaton number three. I don't have a choice but to kill at this point. Is it four or three, actually? I think it's three. This hunt's been going on for a while. Alright, we need to kill, we need to kill, because we have no elemental damage now. Let's not hit bad hit zones, let's <laughs> hit good hit zones. Because like I said, we need to kill. I know that. You're so helpful. Probably fire. We don't have that right now. Oh! Well, we guess it doesn't matter anyway, because we got it. All right, that was the challenge. Let's check the time. Let's see how we did. 19 minutes. Wow. 19, almost 20 minutes. I think he did, what, 2240, 2250? So we actually knocked that time out of the <laughs> out of bark by just a couple minutes. It's still rougher than anything I've done, but we got it done, guys. All right, just the proof for the set. It's a, uh, it's a uh, certainly something. <laughs> you know, part of it is probably because he just didn't have a lot of decorations, just speed running through the game without actually speed running. Farming definitely helps. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's part of the reason why I hate RNG decorations. It should never be a thing again. Charms is okay. Decorations are no, because you can't put anything onto your set if you just straight up don't have it. But you know, he did it. I did it. We both did it. And this was actually kind of fun. Uh, like I said earlier, yeah, throw me some challenges and I'll try to see if I can do them. Uh, just please let me use hunting board because I like it and also I'm terrible with anything else. So if you want to see me suffer, go right ahead and suggest something else. But please don't. I think the last time I've touched anything is like light bow gun to speed through Kulf Taroth. But other than that, maybe the world demo just to try out some stuff. Yeah, to use the Monster Hunter fan slang, I am a dude only hunter. But yeah. Till the next time I see you guys, this has been a K-Plays, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.